Okay, today I want to do a quick showcase on the Hike Micro Lynx Pro LE10 Thermal Scope, Thermal Telescope. Uh, I got this from Night Vision Australia. I got bought it online. It retails at seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars, and you can also get it on a, a payment plan. Uh, just to go through some specs in terms of this device, it's got a built-in rechargeable lithium battery. It weighs at about 260 grams. Uh, it's got an 8 gigabyte built-in memory. Uh, it's capable of taking photos and videos. Uh, it's got a standby power mode. Uh, it's also got 1, 2, 4 and 8 zoom. Uh, it's got four pellets, and that being black hot, red hot, white hot and fusion. Also comes with a, a very good carry case, uh, as well as a strap, and it is uh, IP67 waterproof. So this is the box that it comes in. I've reopened it, but I will show you generally what comes inside the box. So you get the device itself. Got the carry case, got a USB C cable to connect the device to the computer to charge up um, and transfer your files. You got a dust cleaner, and there's manuals as well, which I've got somewhere else. I've taken them out. So that's the device itself. It's very nice, light, compact. We're able to attach a tripod on the bottom. Uh, at the bottom here is where you connect your USB-C. On the top, you've got your power button, so you just hold that down, it turns it on, and then just uh, one second tap, and it'll put it in standby mode. Tap again, and it'll open, uh, reactivate it. You've got your camera to take snapshots, or hold it down, and it'll take the video. That's the cycle through the different pellets, and that's the zoom capability. The zoom capability. So this device is uh, good for, I mean, hunting, animal watching, police, and security. You've got a little cover on there as well to protect the lens. So I've been using this for a while now, and yeah, it's another another device I highly rate. It's a mid short range uh, heat detection device. Uh, what I'll do is I'll showcase the capabilities um, of what this is able to achieve. Uh, so let's get into some of the footage. Some of the footage you will notice is uh, from an earlier review and showcase I did on a, a night vision device and that's because all the test footage with this device has been um, done in at the exact same location. So let's get into that now. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a remote location uh, near where I reside. And it's a morning, it's a daytime view, bright and early. And what we'll transition to shortly is just an aerial view of, from Google Earth of the exact same location. Uh, and then after that into a, a nighttime view in regards to the same location to give you a comparison. So what we're looking at now is an aerial view of the same location we just shot that daytime footage. This is from Google Earth. So in the center you'll see my position where I'm taking all footage from, uh, from that footage that we've just witnessed and future footage of the same area inclusive of the test footage. So down the track in some of the test footage you'll see uh, a vehicle that's our family vehicle parked and at times you'll see my family near that vehicle. So we're looking at about 120 meters. Uh, directly across the road you also see some bushland area uh, which is about 70 meters uh, and directly across the T intersection you'll also see a bend in the road uh, coming up to my location we're looking at about 140 meters and just near there there's a clearing that you'll also see directly across the T intersection 150 meters 
and the road in which you take to uh, arrive at this location about 200 meters so in the daytime footage you would have just seen a 360 what we'll do now is transition to a nighttime comparison and you'll see the same thing a complete 360 and then we'll go straight into the test footage So here we are now in the same location, it's completely dark, it's around 7.30pm and what you'll see is our family vehicle down the dirt road coming to frame in a few moments, there it is there and you'll see me pan around to the road and turn my head torch on just to evidence the fact that I'm in the same location. So this is uh, pitch black, you can't see more than a metre if that in front of you. Um, so this is a good comparison just to show what the uh, thermal is exactly capable of. And what you'll see now is some test footage of the device itself. Uh, so all these recordings uh, from the device and we'll have a look at that now. So here we are at the same location. It's 7.36pm uh, and all this footage now is being shot through the thermal uh, telescope. So as you can see we're panning across. Uh, we're currently in the white hot palette. Uh, what will come into view shortly is the family's vehicle down the dirt road. We've just passed it there. I'm pretty sure I'll pan back. So yeah, we're looking at about 120 metre mark. As you can see in that pallet, uh, the undercarriage and the wheels of the car are coming up in a bright white, which is um, as a result of being in this uh, pallet, uh, white hot. Uh, that's down the road, that's across the T intersection, uh, estimated about 150, and that's the bend in the road, 140 metres in the distance. Uh, look, unfortunately I didn't have any other people to start lining up and hiding in the bushes, so uh, at minimum this will give you a bit of an appreciation of what the device can do in complete darkness and my family will jump out of the vehicle soon and it will give a good example of what uh, the heat signatures of people can uh, give off. So as you can see it's in complete black, uh, darkness, it's a very good device. We've just swapped into the black hot settings now and anything with heat comes up as dark black as you can see underneath the car and the, the wheels it's showing dark black look uh, at times uh, I'm not an expert in terms of heat and retention but I'm assuming that due to uh, certain aspects of the road and surroundings retaining heat uh, due from the, the daytime uh, this will come up as dark and uh, showing heat signatures on this device at night time um, so yeah there's myself going through the zoom capabilities one to eight and again this is complete darkness uh, as you can see we're in the fusion palette now and again at this point the only real thing uh, letting off heat is the car and the undercarriage and the wheels and in that temporary um, panning uh, over the car you can see the undercarriage and the vehicle uh, just the heatness, uh, the heat that's radiated is captured on these uh, pellets. So the zoom capability as you get uh, further up into the 8 and whatnot, it, it does come a bit fuzzy but you can still make out what you're looking at and I think the main thing here is to appreciate the fact that again this is complete pitch black you can imagine that if you're in the uh, area and you're you're panning and looking you're easily going to make out item um, signatures so in the red hot we're in the red hot palette now this uh, what I found and you'll see in the vehicle it shows up the undercarriage and the wheels as uh, heat but I, what I found with the red hot palette is that uh, the further the the object and the less heat it gives off, which to a degree is common sense, uh, the less results you're going to get. Uh, the more closer the, uh, the, the object and um, in this palette, 
the, the more uh, red shows up. Uh, I'll get into it a bit later, but for me personally, I found that the black hot and the white hot palettes just seem to be the best overall in terms of short to long distance, and you'll see that uh, more so in the next example I'll give of the park when we relocate to the park. Um, but what we'll look at now, or in a few moments, my family will uh, jump out of the car. And again, so keep in mind that vehicle was in the vicinity of 120 meters in complete and total darkness. And again, I emphasize on this very remote and you just cannot see anything within a meter in front of you. So let's have a look. And that's my family standing next to the car and we're in the white hot palette. You can easily make them out, uh, their silhouettes. Um, so yeah, from a perspective of what you're after in terms of distance, at 120 meters, complete darkness, this device gets the job done, easily gets the job done. Uh, I'll cycle through the uh, palette. So we're in the black hot now, and again, they're showing up in uh, black silhouettes. You can easily make out a person walking and again infusion they come up in, in those colors when i switch to the red hot you'll notice that uh, they don't give up uh, out too much and i addressed this earlier but you get, can see there's intermittent heat signatures there and you can e easily see the undercarriage of the car and again it comes down to circumstance location distance um, what you're looking for and the purpose at the end of the day out of the four pallets uh, no matter in what situation you're in I can confidently say with this device you're going to identify uh, a heat signature of the target object uh, through one of the four pallets that's taking into consideration a few variables in regards to the object being concealed with clothing or fur or, or whatnot but again I'm not an expert in terms of uh, thermals. I'm very, very basic, but very happy with the device. So what we'll uh, show in a few moments is another aerial view of a, a park. It's uh, about 8, 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., I think it is, and I'll explain some distances and the layout, and then we'll look at some test footage as well of uh, another location in very, very dark conditions. And this will give us uh, another good short showcase. And here we are looking uh, at Google Earth, the bird's eye view of a park, which uh, again, my previous nighttime night vision uh, showcase, <coughs> I oh, shot the footage there as well. This is the exact same park. So what we're looking at is in the center of the photo is my position. This is the position which I am taking all video or using the thermal. So what you can, so that's right there, uh, looking into the park. So what you'll see is in the beginning of the uh, recorded footage my family will stop and they'll start playing on a bit of a exercise equipment there so just keep in mind that's roughly at about a 60 meter distance uh, you'll also see them start walking uh, right towards the end of the test footage with my family the most furthest uh, distance you'll see them is around this path here and keep in mind that's about 130 meters uh, during the footage too, uh, right at the beginning, uh, like I did in my previous video, I'll give you a bit of a scan across the park in terms of what it looks like and how dark it is, as well as some footage from uh, at the rear of the park, uh, looking back towards the position which I'll be taking this test footage. Uh, so keep in mind that will be about the 90 meter mark and now let's look at the nighttime footage now this is being shot on my mobile phone 
and that's just a pan from left to right of the park. And again, this doesn't do it complete justice. You can't see anything within there. Uh, within that park, when you start walking in the tracks and the other side of the oval, it is pitch black. And as you'll see in a few moments, the next bit of footage will be from me in the rear of the park, looking back towards where I'll be taking this test footage, as indicated on the aerial view of Google Earth. Uh, this is about 90 meters. So this is 90 meters towards the rear of the park and Yeah, you can't see the back of your hand very 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 dark Definitely couldn't see people walking around without some aid in terms of night vision thermal or light So the footage now you'll see is shot from the thermal device itself uh, It's about as you can see 8 35 p.m and I'll start cycling through the pallets. As I pan over, you'll see my family uh, adjacent to the oval and they'll start playing on some exercise equipment. And again, as indicated uh, on Google Earth, we're looking around the 60 meter mark. So right there, you can't see people uh, within with your naked eye. I definitely weren't able to make out my family playing around and the dog or any of them it was extremely dark but with the device you can see as I cycle through the pellets it clearly makes out uh, their heat signatures and again my personal favorite is the black hot uh, secondary white hot but again it comes down to personal experience uh, where you're using it distances um, but yeah, just from personal experience, I find that the black hot worked best for me. At that distance as well, when I do cycle to the red hot, as you can see, it is picking up the, the heat signatures. But previously, as displayed the f uh, further out, the heat signature, uh, also considering if it's not putting out a lot of heat, uh, you're not going to get too much of a red spill in terms of what you can see in the uh, red hot. So this next bit of footage will be my family continuing to walk along the, uh, the path and this will be at a distance as shown on the Google Earth. Oh, we're getting to about the 90 meter mark when you see them walking and again the capability of this device is truly, in my opinion, is uh, truly amazing. Uh, for the $800 uh, price range, it's well within reach of the uh, general user. I mean, when you start looking at the other models and what else is available out there, we're jumping up in a significant amount in terms of how much you're spending. So that's the family walking along having a grand old time as you can see but um, as they round that path uh, it, we're going to start getting a bit further in in distances so we're at the 60 meter mark still give or take and you can see yeah in the fusion the red hot you can easily make out the uh, heat signatures and not all the little dog I, I, I'm not sure if that's because he's fluffy or he's just not letting off much again I'm not an expert in terms of the uh, the um, the science uh, behind the thermals uh, but yeah it fr from what you're seeing there that's actually quite good quite good as they're walking along you can see them very clearly so that is the so I'll clarify that footage that was just on they were actually walking a bit closer to me so that was within the 16 meter range but Right there is where you can see them in the furthest part of the park. On the map, I indicated that that's getting towards the 130 meter mark now. And although the road is in the distance, that section there is, is extremely dark. Again, without the night, sorry, correction, the thermal activated, I wasn't able to make them out. And as you can see there in the black hot, uh, especially, you can easily see the silhouettes within the dark. And that's at a two times magnification. Red hot, 
they're not coming up uh, in terms of uh, that palette but as you can see as I cycle through the black hot the fusion the white hot uh, we're talking about a distance of about 130 give or take in very very dark conditions within the park so yeah that's a big tick a big tick in my my book this next bit of footage what you'll see is of my wife uh, Vidi actually recording me on the device I'll start walking uh, adjacent to the park along a path up towards uh, the area in which I took the the rear nighttime footage to show you how dark it is uh, I walk towards the back of the park and start hiding behind some trees um, and this is a distance of about 90 meters you can see me there crouching down behind a set of trees and the device is easily able to make me out and differentiate me uh, in terms of what you're exactly looking at taking into consideration the area and distances so there you have it uh, as you can see from the footage this little beauty is able in complete darkness uh, achieve what it's promoted to do and that's to detect heat signatures in complete uh, darkness so that footage has uh, shown that this is able to achieve uh, that it's at a reasonable price point in my opinion compared to a lot of the other thermals that are available out there uh, with this device I personally prefer the black hot and white hot I found that those two palettes were the most suitable for uh, detecting the heat signatures especially at farther uh, further distances so yeah another device I highly recommend I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it uh, assists you in deciding whether or not you are gonna buy the Hike Micro Lynx Alley 10 Pro Thermal Telescope